Hi, I'm Mitko and in this video I'm going to go over the trigger system in DreamText Plines. The triggers are a way to call methods or change property values when an object reaches a certain point along the spline. There are currently three components that support triggers in DreamText Plines and they are the spline follower, the spline projector and the length calculator. We're going to go over the usage of triggers for each one of them and then learn how to add triggers programmatically during runtime. So in this scene I have a simple setup. I have a spline, I have a cube that has a spline follower and follows this spline and I have this cute little fireworks effect that I got off the asset store. Now let's say that I want to have this fireworks effect played as soon as the cube reaches the end of the spline. Now if I press play, the cube is going to start following the spline but the effect is going to play right away. So we need a way to figure out if the cube has reached the end of the spline and only then play the effect. Now, as you might have guessed, we're going to use triggers. And if I go to the inspector on the right, in the spline follower, I have this triggers foldout menu. If I expand it, I get an add new button and a drop down menu which offers me to create a double, a forward or a backward trigger. Double triggers don't care about the direction of the following. They can get fired if the object is following the spline forward or backward. Forward and backward triggers will only get fired if the object is traveling along the given direction. So let's create a double trigger and select it. Now I can rename my trigger to whatever I want. So let's say fireworks enable. Alright, so this is also going to change the name in the scene. Now the first property here is the position. The position of the trigger along the spline. This is the percent along the spline, so it goes from 0 to 1. You can change that using the slider in the expector or you can directly drag the trigger inside the scene view. The type of the trigger, well, we already went over it, but we have double, forward and backward. And this is going to change the icon of the trigger. So for example, if I select forward, this is going to change the icon to a forward arrow. And if I change it to backward, well, the same, but with a backward arrow. Let's get back to double and see work once. Work once is an option that was introduced in DreamText Plines version 1074. Before that it wasn't available and what it does is it flags the trigger to be triggered only once. So no matter how many times you pass through the trigger, it's going to only work the first time. And most importantly, we have actions. Right now this trigger does not have any actions, so we can create a new action by clicking the new action button. And now I have an object field. So we want to activate the fireworks object as soon as the cube reaches the end of the spline. The most convenient way for me would be to deactivate the fireworks object and then have it activated by the trigger. So I'm going to go back after I've deactivated the fireworks object, select the trigger and drag the fireworks object into the object view here. Now using this drop down menu I'm going to select game object set active. Previously I had an integer field but right now since set active has a boolean argument I have a checkbox. Checking the checkbox would mean that the object is going to get activated as soon as the cube reaches this trigger. So let's give it a try. The fireworks is inactive. Just pause it for a second so I can select the trigger. So we can see it. Here we go. And as soon as I unpause, we can see that the fireworks got activated as soon as we went over the trigger. So the last thing would be to just move the trigger to the end of the spline and see the result. Bam! Now let's check out how the backward trigger would work. I'm going to select this trigger and set the type to backwards. Then I'm going to move it to the middle, maybe just set it here using the fold field. And I'm going to press play. Well, as you might have guessed, it, it's not going to work. And the cube is just going to stop at the end, so uh, nothing happens. But if we set the wrap mode to ping pong, this is going to make the cube change its direction as soon as it reaches the end of the spline. And check it out. The cube reaches the end of the spline, changes direction, and right now, as it passes the trigger, the effect gets fired. And this is basically all there is to triggers. You can create new triggers, you can duplicate existing triggers, you can delete them, or you can change their color. Keep in mind that the color is an editor-only feature, so you're not going to get this feature in the build, but you're also not going to need it. Alright, so let's check out how triggers work with a spline projector component. 
I'm going to remove the spline follower from the cube, add a new object, which will be a sphere, and add a spline projector to it. Now in the apply target, I'm going to set the cube so that the cube reflects the projection of the sphere along the spline. Now in this case, if we want to trigger the fireworks effect, we're going to have to add a trigger to the sphere, which has a spline projector component. And once again, expand the triggers fold out, click add new, click new action, drag in the fireworks object, and select game object, set active, true. Now play it, and move the sphere around, and as we go over the trigger, the effect gets played. And finally, let's check out how the length calculator handles triggers. It's a little bit different, but still the same. But different. But still the same. So, let's add a length calculator component. This time I'm adding it to the spline object for convenience. And right now you can see that the length of the spline in world units is 21 point something. So the triggers for the length calculator are called length events, not actually triggers. And the length events get invoked when a certain length has been reached. So in this case I'm going to activate the fireworks effect as soon as we have reached a length of 30 units. So let's add a new length event by clicking the add length event button. And once again drag in the fireworks, game object, set active, true. And in this case, we don't get any visualization in the scene. We need to work with the inspector and set the target length to 30. Like the spline follower and spline projector, we have a type of the trigger. It can be both shrinking and growing, and they do what the name suggests. If both is selected, the event would get invoked as soon as the target length has been passed, no matter if the spline was shrinking or growing. If growing is selected, it is going to get invoked only if the spline is growing towards this target length. And if shrinking is selected, then it's going to get invoked only if the spline is shrinking and this length was passed. Now I'm going to leave it to both for convenience and hit play. Now we need to just expand the spline so that we reach a length of 30. So I'm just going to get the final point here and start dragging it around. So we have 23, 24, 25, 27, 28, 30. And you see that the event just got invoked. Now let's set the type to shrinking. Still the target length is 30, but nothing will happen as I grow the spline. But as I start shrinking it, I'm going to fire the event. So this is how triggers in DreamTech splines work. Now let's move on to creating triggers using code. Now let's make a spline follower again. But this time we're not going to go to the triggers for that. Instead we're going to create a trigger using code. The trigger is going to do the exact same thing it's going to trigger the fireworks effect. So let's create a new script, create c -sharp script, and call it, well, maybe create trigger. The first thing we need to do is include the DreamTech splines namespace. So using DreamTech splines. We're also going to need another namespace, and this namespace is Unity Engine Events. Now I'm going to add the create trigger script to the cube. And the first thing we're going to do in the script is get a reference to the spline follower component. So I'm going to type spline follower, follower, and in the start method I'm going to get the follower using get component. Now we have a reference to the follower, and we actually don't need the update method at all. Now to create the trigger. First of all, we need to create a method which will allow us to enable the fireworks effect. So I'm now going to create a new public property of type game object and set and name it fireworks. Then I'm going to create a new method called enable fireworks. And in this method, I'm just going to call fireworks set active true. Now all we need to do is create a trigger and pass the enable fireworks method to it. In order to pass the enable fireworks method, we need to create a unity action object. So
This is how it should look like. We create a new Unity action, which we'll call the enable fireworks method. And now to create a trigger, we just call follower add trigger, pass the trigger type, which is trigger type, and we select double or forward or whatever we want. Then pass the enable action. Then set the position of the trigger, which can be between zero and one. I'm going to set it to one. And note that it, this is a double parameter, so you don't have to add an F as a float, so just keep it like that. And this is it. We have added a trigger. Now I'm going to save the script, minimize Visual Studio, and run the game. Now I'm going to press pause and go to the triggers. And you can see that right away we have a trigger at the end, which is called trigger. But here in the actions, there aren't any action. There is one action, but it has no object, no nothing. Don't worry, this is because we just added the action dynamically. And actions that are added through code do not appear in the editor. The behavior is similar to the button events from the UI system of Unity. Now, if I let the cube reach the end of the spline, I'm going to get a null reference exception because I forgot to assign the fireworks to the fireworks field here. But as soon as I do that, and hit play. I'm going to get the desired effect. So this is it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope this video has been useful to you. Check out our other videos on Dream Tech Splice or our company videos where we showcase our progress on our own original game. Goodbye.